when Star Trek The Next Generation first came out, they made jokes about it. And by they, I mean, we made jokes about it when I was in high school being like the love boat in space. Because let's face it, Captain Picard looked a little bit like Captain Steubing. But what if there was a science fiction series that really was the love boat in space? That's the book I'm going to talk about right now, or rather the books I'm going to talk about right now. As I ask the question, is it or are they worth reading? Hey everyone, I'm Ben, Ben Avery, and this is Strangers and Aliens. And one of the things I like to do on Strangers and Aliens, the podcast and the video feed, is to shine a spotlight on Christian creators who work with science fiction, fantasy, comic books, you know, all the the fun, geeky nerd stuff. And so one of the ways we do it is we'll bring them on as guests on the podcast. One of the ways we'll do it is I'll do a spotlight with the is it worth reading. And that's what I want to do today is I want to just shine that spotlight on someone who's been on the, on the podcast before and someone who I've been able to do some video stuff with him before. But this is the first time that I've actually sat down to review his books. And it's a series of books that I'm, I'm just going to jump into it right now and say, yes, it's worth reading for sure. It's worth reading. The author is Adam David Collings and the book series is Jewel of the Stars. And I made the joke about what if someone actually did write a book that was the love boat in space or the love boat uh, crossed with Battlestar Galactica or whatever you might say. The thing of it is, uh, I didn't know until I was actually talking to him on on my podcast where we did an episode. He and I talked about Picard season three. And at the end of the episode, I was like, hey, let's talk about your book a little bit. Um, what I didn't know was that uh, he actually did have a little bit of inspiration from The Love Boat. We'll talk about that in a minute. But The Jewel of the Stars is written to be like a TV series. And I guess that would be one kind of inspiration from The Love Boat. But it's written to be like a TV series, which is meant to feel like you are uh, watching or, in this case, reading a an episode in in the tv series and i really do feel like as i was reading this one comparison i would make to the jewel of the stars and and a science fiction tv series would be battlestar galactica or stargate universe or even star trek voyager where you have a ship that is ill-equipped to do what it needs to do to survive get thrown into a situation that is just terrible But they're also cut off from the rest of humanity. Now, Battlestar Galactica, they're not cut off from the rest of humanity because they are (laughs) the rest of humanity. But um, it just made me think of those kind of shows where it's just one core group against the galaxy, so to speak. And what happens is you have a cast of characters who are on a um, luxury cruise liner. (laughs) In space. Now, it's not quite what you would expect if you have uh, already read Douglas Adams' Starship Titanic, which is <laughs> has a, a similar premise where it's it's about the uh, the luxury cruise liner in space, which I also... Is this worth reading? Yes, it is. Even though Douglas Adams didn't write it, Terry Jones, one of the Monty Python guys, he did write it, and it is definitely written with Douglas Adams' voice I mean, you can you can see the traces of his voice, but it's based on a computer game that Douglas Adams wrote. So while Douglas Adams wrote the computer game, Terry Jones took the computer game, took the ideas and and turned it into a novel, uh, which is itself. The game and the novel are based on a throwaway gag at the beginning of, I think, one chapter in one of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books about the, the, the way that the starship Titanic disappeared. But anyway. And this is another luxury liner book that is definitely worth reading. But back to Jewel of the Stars, which is the name of the cruise liner. They're going on their regular just cruise through space for sightseeing and for traveling and for tourists. And then war breaks out. And it's not just war that breaks out. It is a war that cuts them off from humanity, that quite possibly has destroyed humanity. It's bad which is 
a good premise to take your characters, start them out with regular life, and then cast them into bad new normal. There are three episodes that are out right now. One is Earth Remnant, one is A New Reality, and then the third one, which I do not have in paper form, but I do have in digital form for my Kindle, Kindle app, I should say, The Legacy of War. And each one of these plays out like an episode of a television series. And one of the things that I did appreciate about it as I was reading was it felt like a television series. This really does feel like the pilot episode of a TV series that I want to see. Of course, I got to see it in my mind. And then I got the second episode. And then I got the third episode. And now I'm. it's the if you give a mouse a cookie syndrome. If you give a Ben a great book... He's going to want a sequel. I want book four. I want book four. (laughs) The characters are fun. And speaking of characters, there is a primary crew that are in that main cast of characters. But then this is the inspiration that I was, you know, surprised. Obviously, if you have a cruise liner that's going through space, you're going to have the the feeling of, okay, well, it's Battlestar Galactica mixed with the love boat. But it doesn't have to be the love boat. I mean, honestly, the premise itself is a premise that's really fantastic. When I was talking to Adam about his book, he said that he was inspired in some ways by the episodic nature of the love boat, where in the love boat you have guest stars for every episode. So you have the main crew, you have Captain Steubing, you have Julie, you have Gopher, you have the Doctor and the other characters that I can't remember their names that are there for the entire series. You know, they're every single episode. And then you have the guest stars. And so you have uh, Mr. Howell from Gilligan's Island and you have maybe William Shatner and you have uh, maybe the dad from Eight is Enough and they're all in with their three different storylines. And one of the cool things about The Love Boat that when I was rewatching it recently <laughs> was to see multiple writers. Like each of those segments was actually its own short story. And they had a writer who was just writing 20 minutes of a story that would be cut between all these three different stories uh, that are taking place on the boat all at the same time. It's not that I'm binge watching the love boat or anything, but it was on TV. So anyway, he took inspiration from that by having kind of uh, a different one or two different uh, passengers who is a focus on Uh, part of the book as well and so you have the captain of the ship you have the doctor you have these different characters who are playing their parts but then you also have some subplots that are dealing with other people who are on the ship who aren't quote-unquote main cast one drawback to that is there's a character in book one who i was really hoping to see more of in book two held out hope in book three and now i'm just waiting to see what happens in in book four the other thing that Adam does as he's taking a look at the stories is he does some some logical B plots where it's like what would really happen on a, a situation like that where food is scarce and energy is limited. And so it reminds me a little bit then of uh, The Ark, which is a series that I recently talked about on this YouTube channel, where every episode of that show, there was some sort of not necessarily a full-on disaster, but some sort of disaster that they had to deal with. So they had to deal with, you know, figuring out how are we going to have the energy to do the things that we need to do? Or how are we going to make food last for the entire ship uh, crew when we came out of stasis too early? And so now we need sustenance, but we don't have enough sustenance. We only have enough for like the last two weeks of the journey and we now have a two year journey ahead of us. And so there's some stuff like that happening here where you have like people taking it in their own hands to go out and steal the food. And you have uh, them, you know, taking some risks and going and going places where they wouldn't have gone before, because that's kind of a dangerous place to go. There were aliens that were seen there before. And so now they're going there to try and, and get you know energy cells or whatever from another ship or something like that. And so you have that stuff all going on in this while they're also just trying to survive and just trying to stay alive. And just some really, really interesting subplots that he's weaving through all this. And then, of course, like any good TV series, especially modern TV series, you have the season-long or series-long 
mystery that's going on. And so this is similar to what would happen with you know, Star Trek Voyager, where every episode there was a new planet of the week or monster of the week or problem of the week. But then there's also that constant, constant problem of we want to get home. We need to get home. The mysteries are slowly being revealed. And it's nice because when he does reveal something that gives you some answers to the mystery, there's also some more questions to the mystery. And so I just have to say, uh, even though Adam has been on my podcast, I took part in the book launch for Legacy of War, where he had a bunch of other writers come on and do some um, talking with him. And he did some interviews and things like that. I can't say I'm unbiased. All right. Other than to say, I read this. I enjoyed it. I want more. If you give a Ben a book. (laughs) Uh, And. I recommend it. Is it worth reading Jewel of the Stars, book one, two, and three? Yes, they are worth reading. They're a lot of fun. There's a lot of interesting plot stuff going on. There's interesting characters. The style, I, it's very readable. All things considered, Jewel of the Stars, check it out. It is available for, I think it's not just on Amazon with Kindle. I, I'm pretty sure it's available for other um, ways to read digitally. But then there's also... For me, the print versions were my um, first choice. So all that said, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Definitely check this out. Check out links in the show notes because if you do and click on those links, that's one way to support Strangers and Aliens as a podcast and support me as a content creator. And so until next time, I've been Ben. Ben Avery. This has been Strangers and Aliens. And I just want to wish you wherever you go, whatever you do to get there, even if you are found lost in the middle of the galaxy, aliens all around you who are hostile and want to kill you, I still want to wish you Godspeed. <laughs>